Thank you very much. Well read. Thank you. So let us now just bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, Son, Holy Spirit, this is your word. Lord, speak to us. Speak into our hearts. Open our, our ears, our spiritual ears to hear from you. And also pray, Lord, that you will soften our hearts so that the word which is the seed can be rooted in our lives. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name, amen. Amen. Okay, so if you are joining us for the first time, if you're new here, what we've been doing is we've been going through the letter of James. The letter of James. James, the brother of Jesus, the leader of the church in Jerusalem, writes to Christian Jews, Jews that have become Christians, that are now following Jesus Christ. These Jews are scattered. They're not living in the promised land of Israel. They are living throughout the Roman world due to persecution. So they're out of their, their territory, their, their, um, what feels normal to them, what feels natural to them. And so this letter was written somewhere around AD 48. So we're talking about 15 years after Jesus' death, after Jesus' resurrection. So it's not very long, just 15 years. Very important letter that James is writing to these Christian Jews. And if you read the letter, you will know what James' desire is. James's desire is for Christian Jews, these Christian Jews, to be mature. Everybody say mature. Mature. In the way that they live out their Christian life, the way they live out their Christian life, there must be maturity. That they will be spiritually mature when dealing with trials, that's difficult situations that God allows or permits, when dealing with temptations, and with dealing with behaviours and attitudes in the church. And if you read the letter of James, you see these three things are being addressed. So far, we have looked at how God wants us to deal with trials, how God wants us to respond to trials. We've looked at that quite in depth. We've also looked at the issue of temptations and how they grow, and how they mature and become sin. We've looked at that as well. So we've looked at trials, we've looked at temptation. This morning, here is a word that we're going to be hearing, deception. Everybody say deception. Deception. Okay, so here is a definition from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it says, deception is the act of causing someone to accept as true or valid what is false or invalid. So when you accept something to be true but it isn't, to be valid but it's invalid, you have been deceived. Mm. So I want you to now think of a time when you were Deceived following that definition. A time when you accepted something to be true, to be valid, but it wasn't. And you were deceived. Maybe a hotel looked good on the brochure, but when you arrived at that hotel, it wasn't very good. It was, says it was five star, but really it was a three star. Perhaps a dealer sold you an unreliable vehicle, unreliable car. Maybe a company did not provide the prospects and the promotion that they said that they were going to give you. So you've been deceived. Perhaps a person was not who they portrayed to be from the time when you first met them and they deceived you. Who here has been deceived at some point in their life. Shun's hand went up very quickly there. Yes, we all have been at some point, yes. Who is the deceiver? Who is the instigator of deceiving, of deception? Satan. Satan is a deceiver. He is the instigator of all 
deception. So please remember that. Now, it is one thing to be deceived by Satan, but it's another thing to be deceived yourself. I'm going to repeat that, and I'm going to repeat a few things today so it penetrates. It is one thing to be deceived by Satan. Yes, that is bad, but it is another thing to be deceived yourself. Yes, you can deceive yourself, by the way. It's called self-deception. There are Christians today who are, sadly, unfortunately, deceiving themselves. Why? Because they believe they are living out their Christian life in maturity and in obedience to God, but they are not. This is going to be hard for some of us to swallow today. They are accepting something as true or as valid when it is not. What does James say? He tells us not to deceive ourselves. This is what James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, was writing about. James, a servant of God, verse 1. This is what he's talking about here. People, Christians, deceiving themselves. And this is happening today as well. The Bible is relevant and it speaks to us today. So the question remains then, how are several Christians deceiving themselves? How are they doing this? Well, if you look at verse 19, what does it say there? It says, to, we are to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Wise, wise words from James. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to to anger. Now, we do need to listen to each other, don't we? We need to listen to each other. We will understand much more about each other if we took the time to actually listen. How many times have you said hello to somebody? Hello, how are you? But you didn't wait for them to tell you how they were because you then went in and started talking about yourself. We often ask that question, how are you, as a kind of a mantra, but we don't really, I don't think, care too much sometimes how that person is doing. It doesn't really go in. So we do need to listen to each other. But James is not talking about that this morning. He's talking about something a bit more. In the same way a mother listens carefully to the smallest cry of her baby, that is how we are to be quick to listen to God. Think about it. When a mother has a baby, newborn baby, she puts it down, she goes into another room, but she's listening carefully to that smallest cry of that baby. That is how we need to be when it comes to listening to God. We have two ears, we have one mouth. So you've heard this before, haven't you? We should be slower to speak quicker, to listen. Here are some verses in Proverbs. I do like Proverbs. This is the New Living Translation. It says, Proverbs 10, 19. Too much talk leads to sin. <laughs> Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. Next one says, Proverbs eleven twelve. It is foolish to be little one's neighbor. A sensible person keeps quiet. Proverbs 15.1 A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. The next one. Proverbs 17.28 even fools are thought wise <laughs> when they keep silent. With their mouth shut, they seem intelligent. Have you ever heard that phrase, never argue with a fool, because from a distance, people don't know which one is which? Have you ever heard that? 
Many times and situations in life, we just need to be wise and just keep our mouths closed. You see, when there is no listening, and then there's hasty words, anger is not too far behind. And we'll say that again. When there is no listening, but there's hasty words, anger is not too far behind. Many church issues, many church quarrels and fights have occurred for this reason. And obviously that was going on during James's time as to why he's mentioning it and addressing it. Remember I said the letter of James is about being mature in Christ. Well, being slow to speak, quick to listen and slow to anger is a sign of Christian maturity. We spoke about how you deal with trials. That is a sign of Christian maturity. Temptations, how you deal with it. That's a sign of Christian maturity. And here we have another sign of Christian maturity. Slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to become angry. Do not deceive yourselves. Moving on, James gives us a second reason why several Christians, including today, are deceiving themselves. Are you ready, people? Yeah? Okay. Verse 22. James says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. There, he said it, not me. Do what it is says verse 22 again do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do what it says and James is very good at il illustrations you see that in his book illustrations the tongue being the rudder of the ship directing the course of life he uses lots of really really good illustrations and here in verse 23, he says, it's like a person who looks in the mirror at themselves, but as soon as they have left the mirror, they have forgotten what they look like. That is the comparison to someone who listens to God's word and doesn't do it. Who looks in the mirror and then forgets what they look like? You go to a mirror to fix something, to check something, to sort something out. Yes, we must listen to God's word. Of course we must listen to God's word. And we should be quick in listening to God's word. What does Romans chapter 10 verse 17 say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we do need to listen to God's word. That's why we tell people to come to church to hear God's word. So I'm not knocking the listening part. We need to listen. We need to hear God's word. But we are deceiving ourselves when we are not doing what it says. I'm laboring on this because it needs to be labored on. In the ancient world, people would listen to their teacher. It was very common in the ancient world to listen to your teacher. In the Jewish times, it was a rabbi. So you would listen to a teacher. But a person who tried to live it out became more than that. They became a disciple. Hearing is, of course, where it starts. But Jesus is looking for more than hearers this morning. Jesus is looking for doers. He is looking for disciples. Jesus is looking for more than hearers of his word. He is looking for doers, his disciples. So to take comfort in the fact that you've heard God's word, but haven't done it, is to deceive yourself. Self-deception. It's not Satan this time, it's you. The Bible is an action book. I always tell this to my children. It's an action book. It's full of verbs. It's a doing book. It's life. God looks for trust in him 
and God looks for obedience to him. Trust and obey. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to challenge you all, including myself, with some things that the Bible says. I want you to ask yourself inwardly, are you doing this this morning? So are you ready? No? Okay, some of you are, okay. I'm paraphrasing some of these. Use this as a ruler and as a marker in your own life to ask, oh, am, I, am I doing this? Am I living this out the way I should? Love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. Mark 12, 30. Are you doing that this morning? Love your neighbour as yourself. Mark 12, 31. Seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33. Pray constantly. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. These are all doing things. This is what we are supposed to be doing. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 1 Chronicles 16, 34. This one's for me. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Ephesians 5, 25. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do the Lord. Ephesians 5, 22. Children, there's children here. We're all children, if we have parents. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Ephesians 6, 1. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The first part, submit yourselves to God. James 4, 7. When faced with a trial, rejoice. James 1, 2. This one, be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. James 1, 19. Do we really lift this out? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 28, 11. This is one thing we should be doing every single day. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Put on the whole armour of God. Ephesians 6, 11. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Matthew 6, 14. This is something we should be doing. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Every lofty opinion, every philosophy of man, we put it against God. We take captive of every thought. 2, second, two Corinthians 2, 5. Here are some church ones. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Hebrew 10, Hebrews 10, 24. Let us not neglect meeting together as some have made a habit. Hebrews 10, 25. If you're feeling convicted, that's good, you should be. This is God's word, it convicts us, but it should draw us back to Christ. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Acts 2, 42. 
Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them. James 5.14 I could go on and on and on, but the last one is this one. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 19. Did you hear all those verbs, all those doing things? We are to do God's word. A Christian is deceiving themselves when they hear God's word and do not do it. It is pointless. It is like forgetting what you looked like when you looked in the mirror at yourself. I like what James says in verse 25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law and get, that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Obedience is the hallmark of a true child of God. Did you know that? Obedience is the hallmark of the true child of God. A person that obeys God's word will be blessed. And that should be a good thing to hear. Does anyone know this person here? Anyone know? Shreen's hand went up. The question is, can you see it clearly, I guess? That's the first question. Yes. So this is Charles Spurgeon. If you're in a Baptist church, you should know who Charles Spurgeon is. <laughs> Charles Spurgeon. He says this, I fear we have many much, sorry, I fear we have many such in all congregations. Admiring hearers, affectionate hearers, attached hearers, but all the while unblessed hearers because they are not doers of the word. He says this is common of such congregations, admiring hearers, affectionate hearers, attached hearers, but all the while unblessed hearers because they are not doers of the word. It does not matter if you do not totally agree or understand God's word. It doesn't matter if you totally agree with it. There's times when I've preached things and I can tell that people have not agreed with what I have said. It doesn't matter if you totally agree with God's word. We are to be doers of his word. It doesn't matter if the culture and if society is telling you otherwise and opposes God's word. It doesn't matter. You are to be doers of God's word. It doesn't matter if you are being mocked and laughed at and you're losing your popularity and you're losing friends. You are to be doers of God's word. Luke 9, 26. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. If you are ashamed now to be a Christian, to stand for God's word, then Jesus will be ashamed to present you before his Father. Serious. This is one of the problems in the church today. This is one of the problems. People wish to be entertained, often in churches, with the music, the preacher. They want to come out of church feeling motivated and fired up. They heard the word of God, but by Tuesday, by Wednesday, there was no application of God's word. They're not doing it. And there's no submission to God's will. They've not submitted to God's word. Because this morning you can be a Christian you could have accepted Jesus Christ as your saviour, but have you accepted him as your Lord? Because a Lord is different. The Lord means he rules over your every thought, your behaviours. Have you submitted to Christ's Lordship? 
Not just, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, but are you, have you submitted to God fully? Is he your Lord? Is he your master? Some Christians only hear God's word on a Sunday morning, and so when they come to church, they are empty and they are depleted. Some Christians, I'm going to repeat that, only hear God's word on a Sunday morning when it's being preached. And so when they come to church the following week, they are empty and depleted. Church is every single day. And then they expect the music or they expect the pastor to fire them up again and motivate them. But what have they been doing during the week? Have they opened up God's word? Have they been reading God's word? And have they been applying it to their lives? So that when they come to church, they are just overflowing. And so what happens with some people, the cycle goes on and on and on. Just Sunday, you hear God's word, go about the rest of your week, you come in empty, depleted, and you need to be pumped up all over again. And you expect the music and the pastor to do those things. These issues are not, not new at all. Now, there's another deception that James mentions in verse 26 and 27, which I will not get into. He talks about true religion, what true religion is. Expressed worship to God, a life lived out for Christ. And he talks about briding the tongue again. We need to guide our tongues, control our tongues. And looking after the orphans and the widows, that is true religion. That is what true religion looks like. So verse 26, 27 that's what James is talking about. It's a life lived out for Christ. It's a doing thing. So do not deceive yourselves. I'm going to conclude here. Do not deceive yourselves. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Do not only listen to God's word, but live it out practically. A person that does God's word is a true follower and disciple of Christ. Those that obey God's word will be blessed. So be encouraged this morning. You might be convicted. That's fine. Go to God. Ask him to work in you. Be encouraged this morning. And at the same time, be honest and transparent and challenge yourself in being a doer of God's word. It is time for us to have a deep desire for the things of Christ. We want to hear God's word, but we want to be willing to do whatever he says. Are you willing this morning to do whatever God says you should do? Are you willing this morning to be a doer of God's word. No more just a listener because then you are deceiving yourselves. Next week, I would like to come away from the letter of James for probably about two weeks because there's some other things that the Lord has put on my heart to speak about. So next week and the following week, I would like to speak on some things, especially that are important during these times of deception and of, of increased evil. So I end here this morning. Please pause for a minute as you ponder and as you reflect on these words written by, the, by James, the servant of God, and ask yourself, how is God speaking to you this morning? How is God challenging you Lord, we thank you for your word and please speak to us and may this word penetrate our hearts, causing transformation in our lives. 
renew our minds with your word. Lord, may we no more just be listeners of your word, but may we be active in our Christian faith and doers. Lord, give us your spirit to help us in these areas. You tell us that if we need wisdom, we can ask of it from you, you who gives generously. Lord, pour wisdom into our lives so that we know how to apply knowledge rightly and correctly. In Jesus' name, Amen.